Do your curls ever feel brittle, rough to the touch, tangly, frizzy, and overall unruly? then you might have coarse textured hair. Even if you know that your hair texture is not coarse, but you're still struggling with overall brittleness and a rough feeling or just struggling with frizz and dryness in general, then you'll definitely still wanna stay tuned for this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here we make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love talking about the science of hair, talking about product ingredients, doing a step-by-step -step beginner tutorials and really helping you problem solve with your curls. So let's first start off with what is coarse hair and how can you tell if you have coarse hair? Well, coarse hair is actually a type of hair texture. Texture refers to the actual diameter of an individual strand of hair. So this is not to be confused with density. Density is how thick or how thin your overall hair is. So how many hairs are on your head? If your hair is coarse, then you can definitely feel an individual strand between your fingers. It's very easily felt. It kind of feels like it might even be thicker than a strand of thread. And you can also usually easily see it. Whereas someone with fine curly hair, they might not be able to feel a strand of hair between their fingers or they're just kind of thin and wispy and you might not even be able to see them on a surface, especially if you had light colored hair. And a fun fact about coarse curly hair is they usually have the medulla layer. If you didn't know, our hair is made up of multiple layers. You have the cortex on the inside layer and then you have the cuticle and there's some other layers in there but not everybody has this medulla layer, which is actually the innermost layer, which is inside the cortex. I actually had a really fun hair analysis done by my main bio a couple of years ago where they did an assessment of my hair and actually looked at it under a microscope in a lab and then gave me a full report on it. And in that they revealed to me that my hair is 50% medium and 50% coarse textured. And they actually had photos of what the medullas look like in my hair. It's really interesting. These are like little strands or pockets within the inner layers of your hair. And so people with fine hair apparently don't really have this inner layer. That was actually one of the most surprising revelations in that report for me because I had no idea that I had coarse hair. I always assumed I had fine hair or just medium hair. Now you might be wondering, does it really matter? Well, actually Actually, texture and density and porosity are the most important things to understand about your hair because they do make a difference in the products that you select and just how your hair behaves overall. So another unique characteristic of coarse curly hair and also other types of textures as well is sometimes you'll see those little kinks within the hair. And this is where the hair strand actually changes direction or it might even kind of flatten like the actual shape of the strand. So if you think about a hair strand, how it's normally round, it will actually start to flatten or twist and bend in a different direction. And that's where you get those little kink areas. So I have a video to show you of what those look like. These often feel very bumpy when you run your finger down a strand of hair. It not only feels very thick and wiry if it's coarse, but sometimes you'll also feel these little kinks within there. And that actually can cause a lot of tangles and a breakage for me personally. Anytime I have just a few hairs that are very tangled together and then I'll get them untangled or I'll look at it closely and there is a kink there. And a lot of times that's just causing that overall tangly feeling. But I've also researched that other hair types can have these kinks as well. Or if you were causing too much tension on your hair from wearing your hair up very tight, then that could lead to these kinks in the hair as well. So you might be thinking, is coarse hair stronger and more resistant to breakage because it's very thick and wiry feeling? Now I didn't find any concrete research on this, but from my experience, it's actually worse for breakage for me. Now, although the hairs might not, you know, feel as weak and easy to snap as someone with fine curly hair, because of their rough and brittle feeling and texture that they have, they get tangled a lot easier and they can also snap a lot easier. I don't know if you've ever experienced protein overload in your hair before, but you get that very brittle feeling if you've used too much protein and you get that buildup of protein on your hair and that can cause your hair to just snap, especially if you do the stretch test, which is how you can test if you have too much protein. And if your hair snaps immediately, then it's too dry and it's just not flexible. It doesn't have that elasticity. Well, from my experience, the coarse areas tend to actually show more breakage, which is very odd. You would think it would be the opposite. And coarse hair can also be more prone to breakage because it's a lot drier. I've noticed this for sure. It tends to feel a lot drier. So that's what we're gonna focus in this routine is moisturizing and also just improving the softness and the feeling of the hair. So why is our hair coarse? How do we have these coarse areas on our head? And some of you might have just some coarse coarse areas focused at your crown, which is a lot of the feedback that I got from you all when I asked you if you have coarse hair, is some of you have coarse areas, others have it all over. 
And it really comes down to a couple of internal factors, and that is our natural genetics. And some people just naturally have a coarse hair texture, just genetics. Another factor can be aging. As we age and our hair starts to turn gray, it can feel more dry, brittle, and coarse. The gray areas of my hair actually are more coarse. I've done a whole video all about graying hair and how to manage it, so I will link that for you down below, and you can watch that after this video because they definitely go hand in hand. Another internal factor that I found very fascinating when it comes to our hair texture is hormones and just our overall health and nutrients within our body. Now, hormone imbalances or changes in hormones can really affect our hair, and it's not something that is talked about enough, I feel like. Um, I was reading about how certain hormone imbalances or thyroid conditions can cause a change in hair texture. Another big internal factor that can affect the coarseness or the texture of our hair is nutrient deficiencies. So the nutrient deficiencies that could be causing a change in hair texture or a more coarse texture could be a deficiency in ferritin or iron, vitamin B12, vitamin D, or minerals such as zinc and magnesium. Now I'm starting to wonder if my iron deficiency could have caused all of the coarse hairs on my head. So one of the reasons for having coarse areas in a certain concentrated area of your head, such as around your crown, which is what I heard the most from you all that you have. So things like the sun's UV rays, if you're outside a lot, especially in the summertime, those UV rays can be very drying and damaging to the hair and that area of your head gets the most sun. Also wearing your hair up in tight ponytails or sleeping in the pineapple hairstyle. So now let's get started with the wash day routine where I'm going to walk you through some of the common problems with coarse hair and the solutions to fix them. So the first problem or issue you might experience if you have coarse hairs on your head is the feeling of them being very rough and sort of brittle to the touch. So they have a very rough feeling to them. So what you want to do for this is to make sure that you are using products that contain a lot of slip and have a very softening effect on the hair. One of my favorite things to do before I shampoo my hair is use a pre-poo oil to dry detangle my hair. Now, if you've never seen me do this, you might think I'm completely crazy because who detangles their hair while it's dry? But this actually really helps me reduce breakage. I have way less shedding and it just helps soften those coarse hairs tremendously. So I'm using this pre-shampoo oil from Flora and Curl. This is definitely one of my favorites because it instantly softens up the hair, softens up any existing gel casts in my hair to where I can more easily detangle. So you'll wanna do this prior to shampooing your hair when it's still dirty. I like to do this in sections so I can gently finger detangle my hair. And I usually do this about 30 minutes prior to hopping in the shower or I will even do it the night before. The key is you want to let that oil fully soak into your hair. So you don't wanna go right in with shampoo on top of hair that's too oily. And you also don't wanna to use too much oil. It's just enough to create some softness and help you get your hands through your hair better. Another good solution to softening up your hair that is very coarse is to use your conditioner first before shampooing. Now I decided to clarify for this wash day, I use the Curlsmith Detox Kit, which is actually a three-step system that first comes with a primer. The primer is meant to be applied to your hair first prior to shampooing, so it's technically a pre-poo. I still like to do an oil though first to detangle, and then I use the Super Slip primer from Curlsmith. And this really helps to just soften the hair further, helps you detangle because sometimes I still get a lot of tangles when I go to wet my hair, even after I've dry detangled because you're changing that structure of the hair once you wet it. So a lot of times I do still get tangles. So this just ensures that my hair doesn't turn into a tangly matted mess when I'm shampooing. First of all, your shampoo should not be causing a matted mess in your hair, then it might be too stripping. But second of all, especially if you have coarse hair, you want to avoid that tangled matted mess when you're shampooing. So you would want to first detangle your hair, get rid of all those knots, and then shampoo. And you'll notice how much easier it is to shampoo your hair and to clarify your hair. It's not near as stripping on the hair. So I use the Curlsmith Detox Shampoo Scrub, which is a really nice exfoliating scrub on the scalp. I usually use this about twice a month, especially if I have it build up on the hair. This just helps remove it perfectly, and it doesn't leave my hair feeling stripped as long as I use that primer first. So another reason why I wanted to clarify for this routine is buildup is another common problem with coarse hair. So because coarse hair is already thick and already has that brutal feeling, when it gets buildup, it's definitely very noticeable. Now you might be thinking, I thought fine hair gets buildup more, and it definitely does, but for me personally, I've noticed that any type of buildup on my hair just feels so gross in areas where I have coarse hair. It just feels even more sticky and gets more tangly and stuff. So that's also why I wanted to clarify for this routine. So along with coarse hair having a more noticeable buildup, 
you also want to avoid protein overload. So protein overload is when you've used too much protein in your routine or used too many routines back to back that had a lot of protein and it actually builds up and accumulates on the hair. So if your hair is high porosity and coarse, you might not experience this very often, but if it's low porosity and coarse, that is definitely a recipe for getting protein overload or even if it's medium porosity and course, because that protein really is just going to sit on the surface and can't absorb as much. So it leads to more of a rough and brittle feeling. So with coarse hair, it's already very strong. You know, our hair is made up of keratin amino acids. So we don't need to add a lot of protein to coarse hair because it's already strong. However, I still love doing protein deep conditioners and incorporating protein because the rest of my hair is medium and it's also high porosity. So I just have to use protein with caution. I don't want to do a protein heavy routine back to back every single wash day I like to alternate so for this wash day I wanted to use one of my favorite hair masks that is protein free this mask is from Briogeo it's the avocado and kiwi mega moisture mask I talked about this in my top 10 favorites video that I did for my 2021 favorites but it's a really great deep conditioner at softening the hair which is why I wanted to include it here I have other deep conditioner recommendations as well that I will list for you on the blog that goes with this video, along with other products that I recommend for coarse hair. But this one in particular is extremely softening. Your hair should feel soft and moisturized when you rinse out your deep conditioner. If it doesn't and it just feels brittle, then it wasn't moisturizing enough or you have buildup on your hair that's blocking it from soaking in. So our next problem with coarse hair is coarse hair is often a lot drier, as I mentioned previously. So we need to focus on very moisturizing products products that contain lots of softening emollients or oils, but we don't wanna weigh down our hair because if you have low density hair like me, then that can definitely get weighed down. And if you like volume, then you don't wanna be over moisturizing your hair. So that's definitely a tough combination. So what I like to do is still use moisturizing products, but I just don't use too much of them and I don't layer too many moisturizing products. So I'll show you what I mean. So if your coarse hair is very dry or if you have very dry hair, then you wanna make sure that you are deep conditioning regularly. And you also want to make sure you are not skipping using a leave-in or a cream. I usually use one or the other, but I'm actually going to use both in this routine just to show you some options, but I usually use some type of moisturizer as a base layer before I go in with my gel or my mousse, and that's definitely critical. You don't wanna to use too much though if you do have hair that gets weighed down easily. So for my leave-in, I decided to go with this one from We Dad because it actually says that it's designed for coarse to medium hair. It's called a mask, but it's actually a leave-in, which is really interesting, but it's very liquidy and watery, so it's very lightweight, which made it ideal for this routine because if you don't wanna weigh down your coarse hair, but you also need a lot of moisture, this is a great option. So you wanna focus that leave-in conditioner on areas that are very coarse for you. So then for my curl cream, I'm going to use the We Dad Curl Shaper Take Shape Plumping and Defining Cream. Now this is a very thick butter. Normally I advise against using thick butter creams if you have fine hair, but when you have coarse hair, you can definitely really benefit from using some thicker creams. The key is though to not use too much. So you'll see the amount that I pick up. I just do like probably a nickel size amount for my whole head. And I also add a little bit more to some areas that feel very brittle as I go. But for the most part, I keep it pretty minimal here. The more moisturizing products and creams that you use under your gel, you could potentially reduce the hold in your hair. So that's also why I'm going pretty light when it comes to the cream. And I'm also first applying it to those coarse areas and then working the rest through my hair and combing it through. It's interesting because this curl shaper line I think is meant for fine hair or hair that, you know, if you want more volume. However, this is a very great cream for those with coarse hair because it contains lots of great moisturizing ingredients. So now for my gel, I decided to go with the We Dad Coil Infusion Good Shape Defining Gel. They have some other gels that look similar to this, but make sure it is this one in particular. I will link it for you down below. And it also says it's great for medium to coarse hair. This is a gel that has sort of like a cloudy consistency to it, which is great because that means it's very moisturizing. It's very slippery and has a lot of moisture. It's not gonna weigh down your hair and it does give a medium hold. So you could go with products that are stronger hold. I love strong hold products, but just keep in mind that can lead to more of a brittle feeling in your hair. So if you're really trying to soften your hair, then just go with a medium hold gel. 
I don't usually recommend soft hold gels because they just don't hold up and for me that's a waste of time to spend all that time on wash day and then have to completely refresh on day two. So I'm pretty heavy handed when it comes to gel and this gel is not gonna weigh down your hair so you don't have to worry about applying too much. So if your coarse hair is very dry, then you also want to avoid products that are going to make it feel even more dry. So you wanna watch out for drying alcohols in your hair products. This is usually labeled as denatured alcohol, but these are drying alcohols in your products. These are often found in gels, mousses, and hairsprays, and these can make coarse hair feel even more dry. I would also avoid products that give your hair more texture. So any type of volumizing foams, some mousses, any type of texturizing sprays, dry shampoos, and hairsprays, anything that gives your hair a lot of that grit and volume could make your hair feel worse. And instead, look for products that have very slippery ingredients. So just to name a few really great ingredients for slip, one of them is Slippery Elm, which is a great film-forming humectant. Some other good film-forming humectants are aloe and honey. So those can be very softening on the hair and feel very slippery as you're applying them. I also forgot to mention that I do have a 20% off code that you can use anytime on WeDad's site. So if you're interested in picking up these WeDad products, use my code, which is listed in the description box down below. So the next problem I wanted to talk about is how coarse hair tends to have more kinks in it, making the curl pattern more uneven, more resistant to uniform clumps, and more frizzy. So a lot of times these areas that take that sharp bend or turn also lead to a lot of single strand knots. I get these all the time and they usually require immediate trimming. So I have a pair of hair trimming shears that I will just take and snip off those single strand knots as soon as I find them. And as I mentioned before, whenever I find those, it's almost always in an area of my hair that has these kinks. So one styling technique that I wanted to suggest if you do have these coarse areas that are causing a lot of frizz and you're struggling to get uniform curl clumps is brush styling. I talk about brush styling all the time. Some people don't like brush styling because they say that it messes up their curls, but I found that it actually can help enhance your curls, but you wanna be careful to not cause breakage. So I usually use a brush that doesn't create too much tension, but you still need some tension to be able to actually create ringlets, but it doesn't have to create too much tension. And also making sure that your hair has a lot of slip. So I'm not brushing hair that is tingly, or hair that feels like very dry. This has plenty of slip in it, so the brush is easily gliding, so I'm not causing breakage. So using a brush to style will help you create more uniform curl clumps, and this is really the best way to group those unruly coarse hairs into curl clumps. I talk about this technique in my video all about the common mistakes you might be doing during styling that are leading to frizz. So for this technique, you're basically picking up any little frizzy pieces and actually twirling them into a curl clump. This helps tremendously with hiding gray hairs and also those wild hairs like the one that I showed you that I had shed that was short and had a lot of kinks. That one I'm sure was not forming into a curl clump with as wild as it looks. So this definitely helps kind of tuck them away and hide them. And with using a brush, you can get more uniform ringlets. So if I didn't use a brush to style, my hair would definitely be all over the place. It would look a lot frizzier in the coarse areas and there wouldn't be as many ringlets. So this helps just get that more uniform curl pattern. But you also wanna be mindful to not over manipulate your hair in those coarse areas. So by over manipulating, I mean doing too much brush styling, too much scrunching, too much scrunch diffusing, like any of that over manipulation can lead to more of those kinks in the hair and more breakage. So just be gentle with your hair and don't force it in a different direction. So now that I'm done styling, you can see how my hair looks wet. It definitely looks a lot more uniform. I usually check around the coarse areas and just make sure there's no crazy hairs poking out. If there is, I will just take a little gel on my hands and finger twirl those into a neighboring curl clump. So now I'm ready to diffuse. I'm using my Shark Hyper Air, which I will have linked for you down below. So the next problem I wanted to talk about is how coarse hair is more prone to looking dull and not having as much shine. So to fix that, you can not only use products that help give more shine that contains those film formers that I talked about, but you can also use a finishing oil. And here's how my hair looks after I finish diffusing. I do have some gel casts in my hair, so you can break that up, but I'm going to be using a finishing oil. This is the Curlsmith Bonding Oil. This is really great to use as a sealing oil. It helps soften the hair and it can really help seal in the moisture so your hair doesn't become dull throughout your week and in between washes, and it also adds shine to your hair immediately. So I use a very small amount. A little goes a long way with this oil, and the more oil that you use, you can really just soften it too much to where you don't have any hold in your hair. Um, so I just use a little bit, and I sort of glazed it over and kind of used it to tame any flyaways, but I didn't want to scrunch a ton of it in my whole head because I wanted to maintain that hold. 
So I tried to focus it in just those coarse areas around the outer canopy of my hair. So here's how it looks afterwards. You can see how much shine that I have. It's crazy combination of these great products and that gel gave a lot of shine plus using this finishing oil. So if you were looking for more product recommendations for coarse hair specifically, then I'm going to list out more suggestions over on the blog post that goes with this video along with the products that I used in this video. So the link for that post will be in the description box below this video. So if you head over there, you'll get lots more recommendations. So let me know what your texture is in the comments down below. Also, let me know what your porosity is in curl type. I would love to hear what everyone's hair type is. So if you enjoyed this video, I think you might also really like the one that I did all about how to manage graying curly hair. Even if you are not yet graying, I think it can still be very helpful if you are looking for more tips and tricks for having tangly and unruly and frizzy hair.